Welcome to Crazy Wednesday. Um, every Wednesday, we're gonna do something completely crazy for you guys. Crazy, 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 magic. So uh, we're gonna teach you some crazy magic today. Where's she gone? Where's she? Lalo, Lara, Lara, Lara. <laughs> you got me. High five to that. Right. Is it It is. Right, check this out, Lou. Check this out. This is what we're going to teach the boys and girls. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> hey, oh. Baby. Look what happened to me, guys. What happened to you? I shrank. You shrank? Okay, hold on. Thank you. <laughs> well done, well done. If you want to know how the floating spoon is done, we will show you at the end of this episode. It's amazing, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's really amazing. In the meantime, because we worked on our card skills yesterday, here is another card skill for you. Lalu, blow on the deck. We put the air in. Look, loads of air. And now we're going to let the puncture, let it puncture. Do it again. Whoa, that's crazy. Now to do this, all you do, remember we're talking about in the fan, that pressure, and remember that when we're talking about yeah, that? Yeah, I know. Same idea. You spring them like that, and then you grab it right in the middle between your thumb and your two middle fingers on the other side. And it just pops up. So it looks like you've literally blown air into that deck of cards, doesn't it? Looks cool. Ready? So blow. All the air's gone in. Now we're going to let the air out slowly. I'll do another close-up for you. That's a great gag, isn't it? Yeah. All right. And now, on Crazy Wednesday, a little bit of ballet. Okay guys, so the secret for the, uh, the floating spoon is you need a fork, a teaspoon, and a dishcloth or something around that size. Ideally, it's better if it's longer this way and shorter that way as opposed to a square piece of material. So kids, if you're young and you're watching this, get a grown up to help you because the tines of the fork can be a little bit sharp. So what you want to do is you want to thread the spoon under the middle two tines like that. And then this is held between your thumb and your second finger, sometimes the third if you need more support. Okay. So that's the setup there. So you lower, push the spoon into the fabric and away. And really mime as if the ghost is taking you up and away. And then up to the left. And then straight up and pull it back. Now this is the cool bit. The spoon comes up, into view, and then you can do the same kind of thing, away. Remember that diagonal lines are really strong with this, it's really good, and straightforward. 
and up. It's really good to get as much of the spoon into view as possible, but obviously don't do this because that gives the trick away. So just up to there. To get rid of the spoon, you can either simply place it down onto the mat, that's the easy version, or you can tuck it under your arm like that and shake. Now, if you're extremely observant, you'll notice in that last shot, you can actually see the end of the fork sticking out ever so slightly from underneath my armpit. So what I suggest you do is you ask your mum or your dad or a grown up if you could possibly have a fork that you could keep specifically for this trick. And then what you want to do is you want to colour in with a Sharpie marker, just the end of the fork, most importantly, the edge right here, all the way around, and the end on this side in a black Sharpie marker, and then make sure that you're wearing a black top to perform this. Then what that will do is it will camouflage the, uh, the end of the fork when you put it under your arm at the end of the routine. So if you don't um, put it in exactly the right position, it won't be seen. Thank you.